Today's video is brought to you by Vinyl Moon. Vinyl Moon is the all-in-one deluxe vinyl discovery. Every month they press awesome music on beautiful colored records and send them right to your door. Join today with discount code VINALIZE to get 10% off. All right, now today we're talking about quadraphonic records. Hey friends, welcome back. So if you've been collecting records for a while, then you're probably already familiar with mono and stereo records. But have you ever heard of quadraphonic records? Well, I did this video a while back where I briefly mentioned them, but today we're gonna dive a little deeper into these special records and overall see how they compare to normal records. But real quick before we dive in, today's song of the day is Bring Me to Life by Evanescence, a nostalgic classic from my childhood. And if you have a suggestion for a song of the day as well, post in the comments down below and you might see it in a future video. All right, so to understand where quadraphonic records came from, we first have to look at mono records. So monaural sound, or mono for short, was the very first type of broadcast sound. It used only one audio channel and was meant to be played with one speaker. It was around from about the 1890s till the 1970s. And back then, everything from wax cylinders to radios and gramophones used mono sound. And more specifically, from the 1950s till the 1970s, vinyl records, whether on 12-inch albums or 7-inch singles, were being pressed in mono. But then, during the 1950s, stereo sound was introduced to the world. Now, stereo uses two channels of audio and is meant to be played with two speakers, left and right. So, since stereo provided a much wider soundstage, it eventually replaced mono as the new broadcast standard. And that's why today it's used on everything from headphones to desktop computers, radios, phones, tablets, TVs, laptops, and of course, vinyl audio setups. Overall, stereo just sounds more alive. And that's because its soundstage is more three-dimensional and it brings the listener into the middle of the music. Now, speaking of three-dimensional sound, that finally brings us to quadraphonic, which was introduced to the world in the 1970s. As the name implies, this type of sound used four separate channels of audio and was meant to be played with four speakers. So in the setup, the listener would be placed in the center, and then we'd have the left front, left back, right front and right back speakers placed in a square around him. So essentially this configuration was an early attempt at surround sound. And simply we'd call this today a 4.0 setup. Now, although this idea may sound simple on paper, actually achieving it was another thing entirely. During this time, there were several different companies with different ideas of how to produce quad sound on vinyl records. There were a total of six different formats formats all competing with each other at the same time. These formats were CD4, also known as Quadradisc, SQ, QS, EV4, UV4, and finally Dynaquad. Kind of confusing, right? Well, it gets better. Let's say you want to play one of these records, but you're coming from a stereo setup. Well, in addition to the record itself, you'd also have to buy two extra speakers and a decoder that would make sense of the information on the record and send it out to all four speakers. And to top that off, you'd better be careful purchasing that decoder because if you bought the wrong one, it wouldn't work. So for example, if you bought an SQ record, but the decoder was QS, you my friend would be up the creek without a paddle. And I'm sure a lot of people made that mistake. Now, as a side note, if you want to play these CD4 records in particular, you'd also have to buy a special stylus that was capable of tracking its higher frequencies. Something like a nude Shibata stylus. And as a side, Side note, the quad records themselves were also more expensive for the record labels to manufacture compared to their stereo counterparts. So as you can see, there were some major issues with this format, and ultimately these flaws led to them becoming a commercial failure. They were just too complicated and too expensive, and that's why they were only around during the 1970s. Now one question you may have is, how do quad records compare to stereo records? Well, as we all 
all know, stereo records have one long groove which moves from the outside to the inside of the disc. And the channel of that groove goes left and right and up and down. So that's basically how it's able to produce two audio signals. Now what's interesting about the quad records is that overall, their grooves do look very similar to stereo, but there's also hidden information encoded into those grooves. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, take the CD4 records for example. In addition to the normal band of frequencies that humans can hear, there was a second higher band hidden inside the groove that humans cannot hear. That higher band would then be read by a demodulator sent out to all four speakers and we would have quadraphonic sound. So the first signal would be anywhere from 20 to 20,000 hertz, which is audible, and the second would be anywhere from 30,000 to 45,000 hertz, which is totally imperceptible. Except maybe for whales or dolphins or dogs. Now the biggest question of all is can you play a quad record on a stereo setup? And the answer is Yes, you can, but some will sound better than others. As I mentioned, there are six different quad formats, and those six can be further divided into two categories, discrete and matrix. Now, I won't bore you with the technical details because I feel we've done too much of that already, but suffice it to say that the matrix systems sounded better on stereo setups. And the SQ records in particular sounded the very best because they were actually designed to be backwards compatible with stereo setups. So even if you didn't buy the extra speakers or decoders or demodulators or any of that stuff, you could just buy the SQ record and it would play fine. You just wouldn't hear those two extra channels. Now, speaking of SQ records, the only quad I have in my collection is an SQ record called Company, A Musical Comedy. Basically, it's a theatrical play on vinyl. And after looking at the cool quadraphonic inner sleeve artwork that it came with, I decided to pop it on the turntable and give it a spin. Now, my first impression was that it sounded totally normal, like a regular stereo record would. There were no weird hums, buzz, buzzes, or audio glitches of any kind. However, as the record kept playing, I did get the sense that this production was much bigger than I was hearing in my headphones. And that's because the SQ technology shoves four channels of audio into two. And unless you have that decoder, you won't hear the other two. So things feel a bit crowded. Now, if I had the proper gear, I could experience the full breadth of the music, but even in stereo, you still notice how they pan the sounds from left to right to develop that sense of space. So overall, everything sounded clean on my setup and the stylus tracked those grooves just fine. Now, speaking of cool records, I want to show y'all one of the newest releases from today's sponsor, Vinyl Moon. This is volume 57, and it's called The Long Run. As you can see, it's on pearl white vinyl with a dash of blue thrown in there as well, which looks really cool. And also, all the artwork on this release is from Shane Klusky, who I think did a great job creating a sort of mysterious and spooky ghost theme on the cover, the record, and the included 24-page comic book. And speaking of that comic Comic, it basically tells the story of a lonely ghost searching for his long lost love so they can finally be reunited and leave the earth together, which I thought was really sweet. And as far as the music goes, that's also really good. With my favorite tracks being Believing in Yesterday by Limon Limon, which is an excellent indie chill wave pop track, and Gymnasian by Han, which is a very smooth Italian synth pop track. So like I said, if you wanna check out Vinyl Moon for yourself, their link will be in the video description down below. All right, now getting back to Quad Records, here's a few bands that released their albums on the format back in the day. Bread, Jim Croce, Charles Mingus, Santana, Black Sabbath, The Carpenters, The Guess Who, Simon and Garfunkel, Miles Davis, Pink Floyd, Jefferson Airplane, Three Dog Night, Johnny Cash, 
Barbara Streisand, Judy Collins, Chris Christofferson, Bob Dylan, The Doors, Bette Midler, Carly Simon, and thousands of others that we don't have time to mention in this video. And as a side note, there's also this compilation record called An Introduction to the World of Quadraphonic Sound, which has a very trippy cover. Now, overall, there hadn't been a new record pressed on this format in over 30 years until this one from Suzanne Ciani. This is her album Live Quadraphonic that was released on 180 gram quadraphonic vinyl on June 4th, 2018. The record spins at 45 RPM, plays for a total of 30 minutes, and inside the box it even includes the decoder that will work with your vinyl setup. However, it doesn't include those two extra speakers, so. You gotta buy those on your own. Overall, Techmone did a great video unboxing this record, explaining it, and testing everything out. So if you wanna see his video, you can hit this card right up here. Now besides that new release, which is kind of the outlier, Quad Records just never really caught on with the mainstream public. And the reason for that, I think, was due to the complexity and the expense of the format itself. However, the upside is that it did pave the way for digital surround sound in home theater setups. 5.1 surround, 7.1, Dolby Atmos, and all the rest wouldn't be where they are today if Quadraphonic hadn't laid that original foundation. Basically, it all started with this idea of placing the listener in the middle of the speakers. So it was a good idea, but just not for vinyl records. For now, two speakers will do just fine. Now finally, if you're interested in learning even more about this format and you want to go down the rabbit hole, you can check out quadraphonicquad.com, which has a lot of great forums, and also Tab Patterson's site, 4channelsound.com, which is another great resource. So with all of that said, do I think we're going to see a rebirth of the quadraphonic format? Probably not, but what do I know? I'm just some guy on YouTube. Now, what do you think about quad records? Do you have any of these in your collection? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you love record collecting in general, feel free to hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you won't miss out on the new videos. And most importantly of all, friends, have an awesome day, stay safe, and keep spinning that vinyl.